Cadex have just released an update for their Avatar HD system that finally brings spectator mode. The big question is though, does it actually work? Now to answer that, we're going to do a few flights. Now I brought with me some DJI gear as well as my Avatar HD and if we're lucky we'll do a comparison between the two but we're predominantly going to be testing the Avatar in this one. To demo this I've ended up having to bring a laptop. What I was hoping to do was actually do what I did with the DJI system and that is fly with the spectator but I can't do that on this because the Avatar spectator doesn't record. It's the same whether it's the goggle or the module whichever one it is though it doesn't record which means I wouldn't be able to show you the first. Footage. I could have flown it with the HD Zero goggles, but they won't record from HDMI either, so I'm left having to record on the laptop. So the setup is going to be me flying with the Avatar goggle, and then the Spectator being recorded to my laptop via a HD60S, and that's what I'll show you back at the studio. Now, antenna-wise, we're going to fly the VRX with its standard antennas, and I'm flying the main goggles with a set of Omnis rather than a set of patches, simply because I don't really want to give them an advantage too much over that. Now, just to make sure I'm not going to be in the way of this, I've got the goggles on the power station. I'm going to be flying out from there with me from behind. Now, the way this works is simply on the main goggle, we need to turn on broadcasting, and then in the spectator goggle, we need to go into the shear menu, enable shear, wait for it to show, click on the box, and then they will connect. So the first flight was simply a shakedown to make sure everything was working as expected in these tests. Now, you'll notice I'm in angle mode. I didn't actually intend to be in angle mode. Unfortunately, my switch wasn't working on the radio because there was a programming error in beta flight. But as I'd already taken off, rather than come back in and change it, I just stuck with it for the first test. Now... The plan was to simply move around the field very similar to as I did in the video I put out last week on the DJI system when used in spectator mode. DJI does start to break up quite close, whereas Avatar so far looks quite good, so I started pushing it a little bit further to see how it behaves. After a quick battery change and fixing that beta flight issue, I was back in acro mode and we were able to test it more. Now, this flight, I wanted to push it harder. Again, testing it on the field at the start just to see how it behaved, but then push it more towards a signal loss scenario. Now here you'll see me move around the trees and this time we ended up actually losing signal and the actual video link dropped. It did though recover when I did a punch out and came through the other side but there was a gap in the footage. If I now show you the side by side on what I saw in the goggles compared to the spectator goggle, you'll notice that it is actually very, very similar. They both lose signal and pretty much regain signal at exactly the same point in time. And really, it just shows that there wasn't a massive difference between them. Next, we started to see the more interesting behavior. And this was what happens when the signal starts to get very low and it isn't able to recover. You started to then get this psychedelic behavior from the avatar system to the point where it was simply unviewable. And then as I move back towards myself, you can see that it does recover. 
What's super interesting in this is that it is clearly dropping the ability to recover from the signal loss. There is no additional frames coming in when it does this, and you get this completely psychedelic look, unlike anything I have seen on any other system. Now, just to show you a side-by-side -side with the main goggle recording compared to the spectator, and here you can see that there is a dramatic difference compared to what the pilot is seeing. What seems to trigger it is as the bitrate drops, there's a point where it just completely melts down on the spectator goggle, but the master remains absolutely fine showing you it here where i had that signal loss as i moved around the trees everything looks absolutely fine on the main goggle yet the spectator is completely melting down So next, it was time to try the DJI system and just give you an overview of how that looks. Now, I do have a separate video on the DJI Spectator mode, which I recorded actually just last week. I'll put that up in the corner if you're interested in seeing it, but I will now put a bit of footage up just so you can see on the same day the difference between the two systems. For the DJI test, I'm going to use the stock V2 goggles with the normal antennas as the master. And then for the spectator, I'll use the V1s with a patch antenna on. It'll give them a bit more compared to the stock V2s, but it will also be more comparable to the Avatar VRX module.
OK, so to share with you some thoughts, and just to be clear, I am still doing a lot more testing on this, but initially the Avatar HD Spectator mode does look a lot better than DJI's. You'd have noticed on the V2 system, both in some of the footage I showed you today and the footage I shared last week, is that it will start to break up instantly. It really does not have the ability to hold a solid image at all. The O3 spectator mode is a little bit better, but it isn't dramatic. And with the O3 system, the second you get out, say, 40, 50 meters, it does start to exhibit exactly the same behavior as the V2. It's just the V2 or V1 system, I should say, does it from the very beginning. This, though, on Avatar looks very, very good. It looks almost perfect. And initially, in my flights, as you saw on the first flight, the breakup actually was quite consistent. Whilst it would begin to break up and block, it would recover okay. We then, though, have to talk about the psychedelic mode. Now, in my initial flight, it was fine. It was one full flight that worked, as you saw at the beginning. And then every subsequent flight ended with this complete meltdown of the image. At the field, I tried rebooting the equipment, I tried redoing everything, and it was exactly the same. And I don't fully understand at this point why one flight was working fine and the others were not. But it is clear that there is something in this spectator mode that is completely different to anything we have seen from any other manufacturer. Now, just to explain quickly what modes on the Avatar HD system this works on. In my testing so far, it's pretty much all of the modes. It works in 720p 60 and 720p 100, both high and low bitrate, although it is temperamental in 720p 100 high bitrate. It also works in the 1080p mode as well from the looks of it, and again in high and low bitrate. The only thing that I've really found that doesn't work on this system compared to the normal system is you cannot record on the spectator goggle. The recording works absolutely fine on the master but there is no recording on spectator at this time and that's the reason I ended up having to use the HD60S and the laptop to record this footage. Now it is worth me explaining why the spectator goggle looks different to the master goggle. For those who don't know, these are two-way digital FPV systems. What I mean by that is you have a goggle that transmits information to the VTX or ear unit and the ear unit that transmits the video signal back. The way these systems work is that they are highly compressed digital video signals that break the image down from the camera, transmit it back, and that is then put back together and displayed on the screen. The problem with those systems are you're breaking the image down into blocks and transmitting them down, and if you get some blocks missing, you then will get what you've seen in that avatar footage. The image just completely fall apart. The way these systems work in normal operation is it will basically receive the signal from the VTX, decode it and acknowledge that it's okay. If it isn't okay, it can then request the data again. That means if there is any short term or temporary data loss, the system is able to recover and prioritize the image over the latency. And that is why the latency on these systems is variable because as the signal is strong, it is absolutely fine. It's receiving the signal, decoding it with no errors. But as the signal gets weak, it then has to start re-requesting data Data, and as such, you then start to get the system break down and increase latency. The big difference between the main mode and spectator is spectator is not two-way. All the spectator goggle is doing is receiving the signal and decoding it. And that is why when it is strong, it looks absolutely fine because there is no need for the two-way link or the need to re-request data. The problem comes when the signal starts to drop. The goggles then have no way of re-requesting that lost data and as such the image breaks down. There is no easy way to do a spectator mode on a system like this that doesn't require a two-way link because the reality is highly compressed signals require all sorts of communication back and forth to ensure that the link remains stable. Now, this is different to HD0, for instance, because HD0 works a bit different to any of the other systems on the market in the sense is that it streams video out 
down to the receiver and that is sort of a digital version of analog and whilst you still get data loss the way that data is actually handled is different and that's why you get the sparkles rather than the large compressed blocks of failure that you see on these systems. Now I am still doing a lot more testing and trying to understand what the cause of this is. I've been looking at the information on the main goggles such as the bitrate to try and see if there is anything that could be causing this and I'm going to do a bit more testing over the next few weeks and I will share with you my thoughts once I've done that. Here and now though I'm not seeing anything to really show what is causing this. What is bizarre though is the fact that when it starts to do this at signal loss it just completely melts down. It's like it's not even bringing in any new frames but I do need to do more testing to fully understand it. Now just before I finish this one up I just want to say there is a link to a video in the comments and description of this video that I want to share with you. I can't upload it to YouTube for licensing reasons however when I was editing this in the studio this just jumped into my mind and I just had to do it so if you're interested in seeing that please do check it out don't worry it's not a virus it's just a video file I just can't put it on YouTube because it will get me banned anyway that's it from me on this one if you have found it interesting please do let me know what you think in the comment section if you have any questions please do put them in there as well furthermore if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep buying equipment like this because we bought this system Cadex did not send me this system Fat Shark did not send it to me if you you'd like to support us to allow us to keep providing this content please do consider checking out the links to my patreon it's only through the support of my patrons i'm able to keep making content on this channel and i want to say a massive thank you from me to everyone who supports the channel either through patreon or buy me a coffee and if you think we've earned it today please do consider checking it out anyway that's it from me let me know what you think in the comment section don't forget that video stay safe i'll speak to you soon